Hey guys, it's Vampire Mike from SegaCityUniverse.com again. This is the uh, second part of my uh, little special on the most expensive Sega CD titles. So, we're going to kick it off with a good one, Earthworm Jim. Easy, yes. I'm not very good at this game because it's a platformer like usual. So, in case none of you know what Earthworm Jim is, it just got re-released recently on the, um, I think the PlayStation Network and Xbox Live Arcade. This is the Sega CD version. It has, I think, more levels. They upgraded the graphics, the sound, obviously, because it's on CD. It's one of the best platformers probably ever to come out. It's difficult, and it's also kind of strange, like a lot of goofy humor, but it's very good. It's like Sonic in a sense that if you collect those uh, things, um, those neutron, not neutron, neurons or whatever the hell they are, um, <clears throat> you, that's like your life. So if you lose them, you, you die. I don't know how you get up there. I wonder what those things even do. So you can jump, you can throw your, you can pull your head out of your suit and smack people with it because you're a worm. You can shoot bit, bitches, you could jump and then when you keep pushing C really fast your head spins and you can float down, but it's kind of a little difficult to do. Oh, that, that, re that energizes your uh, gun, okay, gotcha. I don't even care about the bullets, just get me out of here. I don't condone violence against animals by any means, um, but if you are an earthworm in a alien planet and crows and dogs are attacking you, then you have to do what you must. I'm almost out of bullets too. I'm just 
fucking dog. The sound's really good, the graphics are nice, the gameplay is good. This is a solid platformer and a solid Sega CD game. It did come out on other consoles, so if you have that, you might not really care. But it's also super expensive and super rare for some reason. For, for platformers anymore for some reason. Alright, so you guys get the gist of it. I'm not going to show you too, too much. I do have another three games to cover. So next, let's go into, uh, let's see. How about we'll go into Cobra Space Adventure? Because that's one that's not really well known, but uh, very expensive. And it's a cool graphical novel. I, I like it. I'm not done with it. I've never actually beaten it, but I'm, I think, fairly close. So, um, here we go. We're going to go into Cobra's, uh, Cobra Space Adventure. The Space Adventure Cobra. It was actually um, an anime first. And they turned this into a game. I think it was pretty popular at one point, at least in Japan. It's also very rare on the Sega CD, obviously, which is what this whole video is about. Sorry guys, trying to get the camera good. Good enough, hopefully. Alright, well, fuck the story, we get it. So this may not be everyone's cup of tea. Uh, it's like an anime game, lots of cutscenes, lots of lots of audio, lots of dialogue. It's pretty much a visual novel. You have to pick where to go and who to talk to and what to do. I like it. As I said, I hadn't beaten it yet, or I haven't beaten it yet, but um, very good. I also picked it up near the end of my collecting for the Sega CD because it was one of the harder ones for me to find. I think one of the last ones I found, which was weird, was like. I didn't realize there was two Sherlock Holmes games or something, I got that one, but... There it 
some people would find this game boring because it's like you say, look, look, think. It's a lot of dialogue. So where Snatcher breaks up the uh, cutscenes and the interactive, you know, comic, visual comic uh, thing, Cobra Space Adventure doesn't. The, the whole game is like this. So if you don't like these slow-paced thinking, kind of knowing who, you know, who to talk to and what to go and where to go, then it's not going to be your cup of tea. So yeah, as you see, the, the dialogue will repeat itself when you have nothing left to do. So you have to obviously pick something else. Those are fighting words. It's most likely hanging around outside. Like, no, I can't move out of here until I pick the right. The right option. What's the matter, pal? Did your girlfriend tell 
you to take a hike? You better run at home like you're your mama calling. Oh, why do you have to be so mean? You know, I like fuzzy. What? You have to You know who you're talking to. Yeah, a stuffed girl. Shut up, smart ass. Unless you want to get sliced and diced. Ducks behind. I'm gonna chop you up so bad they're gonna need a microscope to find the pieces. Big bad monkey's got a toy knife. You should be careful. Purchase. Ah! Give your butt goodbye! All right, so this is primarily the game. I would show you more of it. We're almost hitting 10 minutes, but uh, this is it. It's good, it's really good, but it's a visual or a graphic novel. If you like playing through stuff like this and you know you like to sit back, relax, have a cup of coffee or tea or something and just kind of pick options, it's good. If you're more of a fast-paced guy or you like a lot of interaction, you will not like this. But it's one of the rarest, it's one of the most expensive, so I wanted to put it on here. Um, what do we got next, what do we got next? Let's do, uh, one of the, the best ones. We're gonna do Snatcher now. Here we go, we got Snatcher on the Sega CD. This game is amazing. It's part graphic, like visual novel. It's uh, kind of like an adventure game. It's also a shooter. Uh, there's not much shooting, but the story is so well done and so cool. It's kind of like a uh, Blade Runner type game. It's definitely a cyberpunk adventure, as it says up top, which is great. I love the cyberpunk uh, atmosphere and genre. And if you haven't played this, you definitely should. It came out, I believe, originally on the MSX. Um, and there was a couple of different renditions of it, but this one I like a lot. I'm trying to think what else I want to say about it. Joy pad only. Oh, you can also use the gun if you have. Draw a blaster, select shoot. <laughs> It's also done by Hideo Kojima from uh, Konami, I guess, so he's uh, the dude who did Metal Gear, in case anyone knows that. So it has like some elements of Metal Gear, some name references, um, there's a lot of little, little uh, fan service in this game. Huh, that's cool. Its purpose and origin are unknown. Is it a new form of weapon? 
or perhaps an invasion from some other world. They appear during winter killing humans and infiltrating society by taking the place of their victims. Employing an artificial skin, they can sweat and even bleed. Part organic, part machine, they're almost impossible to distinguish from those they kill. As they steal their victims' bodies in order to take their place, these mysterious invaders become known as Snatchers. I haven't played this in a long time, but um, it is extremely engrossing, a lot of fun, and you think about it after it's over, it was really good. Junkers are the people that uh, get rid of the Snatchers, like the, like the Harrison Ford of uh, the Blade Runners, you know. So this is similar to Cobra: The Space Adventure with this stuff. I was hoping to show you the first mission because it was really cool, but um, I don't remember how far in it is. Hopefully, I, I don't want to film for 20 minutes on one game, you know? Chief Cunningham, Gillian Seed is here. I brought him in as you requested. Thanks for coming, Seed. I'm Benson Cunningham, the Chief of Junker Operations. Gillian Seed, I've been transferred here from the 17th Special Forces Division. I've heard all about your special training in the military, Seed. I hope you'll put it to good use on your new assignment here. By the way, I understand you're suffering from amnesia. Any sign yet that your memory's coming back? I'm afraid not. I still can't remember a thing from before the Army picked me up three years ago. You're married, aren't you? Yes, but we're separated now. She has amnesia as well, and without any memories between the two of us, I'm afraid there was very little to base a good relationship on. I can see your point there.
There's also a, uh, a sequel that takes place, I think, a lot further in the future called Police Knots. That was out on the Saturn in Japan, the 3DO in Japan, and I think the PlayStation 1 in Japan. It never really got released here officially. They did do a fan translation. Uh, I think it just loosely ties in, and there's some references. But, um... But that, uh, I have it on 3DO, I just haven't started it up yet. Plus it's in Japanese, so I really won't be able to understand it anyhow. So, I mean, if, if you like adventure games and you don't mind, like, Cobra Space Adventure, same idea. If you don't mind methodical, slow, you know, games that you can give the talk and find out information and piece things together, I think you'll like it. Damn it, I want to get out of here. Hope you don't mind, I'm trying to kind of cut through this a little bit. We're already 10 minutes in and I haven't... I mean, this is primarily what the game is. So again, if you don't like this type of game, you're not going to like it. But trust me, it's worth it. It's This stuff's great. If you really get into it and you read everything. And uh, the shooting parts are cool. And the adventure stuff, it's awesome. It will identify you as a junker. Carrying it allows you to exercise your special authority. I see. Sort of like a police officer's badge, huh? And, uh, here's some money. It's not much, but you'll need it to carry out your investigation. Cash? Credit cards aren't accepted in some regions of the city. You'll need this sooner or later. Sounds like it's a rough place out there. Go see Harry, the engineer. He's got your equipment ready for you. Alright, so I'm gonna stop it here. Uh, I apologize again to any shooting. The shooting is kind of few and far between. The first mission is very cool, and you have a little android buddy, a slight spoiler, but it's the first mission, so you'll see it. You have a little android buddy named Metal Gear, who follows you around, he's like kind of like the comedic sidekick, and he, uh, the, he, he's just great. It's funny, he does all this cool stuff, you, there's a lot of good character development in this game. Uh, I would definitely recommend checking it out, I know it's very expensive, obviously, because it's in this video, and uh, it's hard to come by, especially complete. So, um, check it out any way you can, it's a great game. So next we're going to move on to the, the, one of the biggest and rarest Sega CD titles, Keo Flying Squadron. So, here we go. Okay, so this is uh, one of the rarest, if not the rarest, Sega CD game. Keo Flying Squadron. It's odd, it's good, and it's just a weird side-scrolling shooter. This was also one of the last games I had picked up from my collection um, to complete it. Fire Kamikaze. Visuals on. What does that even mean? Secret 
treasure, Grandma. Don't ask so many questions. The only thing I remember is it's called Ark. Ark? I wonder what it is. Dr. Boone wants to use the Ark to turn this planet into a raccoon world. Hey, why not? Sounds like fun. What a fool you are. It was totally your fault. You know that. You really should. I guess you'll never learn. Well, listen, Rummy, until you get that key back, you will get no food. Wait. That's right. No key, no dinner. You better hurry and chase them down. I hate this. Hey, Spot, we gotta go. Spot, are you still sleeping? Wake up! <laughs> The bubble coming out of the dinosaur's mouth reminds me of uh, Little Nemo, the Dream Master. So you have these dinosaurs with you, you hold B down to shoot, you can hold it, you don't have to just push it, which is nice. The characters are all really strange, I mean, you're like a bunny girl wearing... I don't know, like a Playboy Bunny outfit or some crap. C does your special attack. I don't want to use that yet, because... Oh, slow and fast. I guess I'll leave it on fast. Graphics are pretty good. I think they could have been a little more well defined. Um, you know, there's some jagged shit around the edges of the graphics on the. That again, I always say the same thing. It might be just because I have an HD TV and that it's not a, an HD game. But whoa, that was a special attack where I just throw all that crap out. I want to see if there's a weird pause screen or something. As you pick up power ups, there's all different types of uh, you know stuff you can pick up to change your, your bullets. I don't know if I'd put it up there with uh, what's that really good Sega CD, like Robo Alesti or uh, what's the other one, Lightning, not Lightning Force, Thunder, something on the Sega CD. That one's really good too. I don't know if I put it up there with that, but it's pretty cool. One second. Excuse me. One second. Lords of Thunder. That's what I was thinking of. That one's good. I like that on the Sega CD a lot. So, the question is, do all these games I've showed you warrant their rare status and their high price tag? Um, Earthworm Jim's good, I, I don't think it warrants the price tag. I think it's a good game, it's a nice little upgrade from the other versions, but it doesn't warrant it. The same goes for Radical Rex. Popful Mail is awesome, that might warrant it. Snatcher definitely warrants it. This, probably not so much. Um, what else, what else, what was the other one? Helpful Mail, Snatcher... Mad Dog McCree, I like a lot. Does not warrant the price tag. And Cobra the Space Adventure... It's kind of a niche game, it probably doesn't warrant it, but I do like it a lot. So I would say Snatcher and Helpful Mail probably deserve the, uh, the rare status and the, the higher price tags out of the games I've shown you in this two-parter. 
to be a boss fight. Some sort of cow. Oh, there we go, there's a cow. There's a monkey over there and a bird with a cat on its back. Twice. Why is the cow shooting at me? He was my friend. Show. That's cool. So I'm going to stop it there. Um, I hope you enjoyed my little two-parter on the most rare and expensive Sega CD titles. Let me know what you think down below in the comments. Do they deserve the status? Do you think they're rare for a reason? I mean, obviously a lot of it has to do with production with them coming out maybe near the end of the Sega CD's life cycle. But um, what do you think? Are they, are they worth the money that they're getting on eBay? Especially with the uh, no copyright protection on the Sega CDs and ROMs and all those other illegal crap out there. Um, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed what you saw, and if you'd like to see anything else, let me know. It's Vampire Mike from SegaCDUniverse.com. Take care, guys. Be good.